So, what is hypermobility? Again, a fancy word, but we're going to break it down now. It's really just, if we, if we take it into its two parts, we've got hyper, which we can basically substitute with you know, excessive, um, and mobility, we'll just refer to that as movement for the time being. So, I like to call these guys the, the Bentley Brigade, uh, and you can usually spot them a mile off. They're the guys that can do overhead squat with that really narrow grip and go down no problem. Um, they're the guys who drop arse to grass into the bottom of that squat and come back out while people are into stretching the corner for hours just to kind of get anywhere near the same depth as them. Uh, they're the ones who could do PVC dislocates all day you know, with their hands really close together. In any case, you kind of get the idea. Um, but I think that there's a kind of important distinction to make here is that um, hypermobility, uh, or, or, or we can or we can also sort of refer to it as, as laxity, is that um, uh, this is a this is a sliding sort of scale. This is this is a spectrum uh, rather than a, a you have it, you don't. We just all have you know mobility to a to a, a greater or less degree on this scale. So you're on this side. Uh, on the further end of the scale, we've got people with a, a, a large amount of joint laxity. Uh, you know, these are more the typical people that we call hypermobile. You've got the people in the middle who have you know, what we call a normative range of, of motion, uh, normative values of range of motion, and then we've got the people at this end who are probably more high, hypo, as in an O, or, or in an um, insufficient range of motion to perform the, you know, the tasks that they need to be able to do, either in daily life or in sport down here that kind of the, the, the people that tend to be stiffer okay so it's not to say that you know laxity in itself is not pathological it doesn't mean you have an injury yes it may make you predisposed to a certain set of injuries that other populations are but laxity in itself is not instability and this video isn't going to cover instability but essentially stability um, what we kind of refer to here is a, a, a kind of harmony between your static stabilizers, you know, so things like your ligaments and your joint capsules and stuff like that, and your dynamic stabilizers, uh, so the things that can, you know, things that contract, you know, like your, if you were the case, your shoulder, your rotator cuff, and your muscles, um, and your neurological system, so the, the, the nerves that are firing those muscles, telling them, uh, coordinating the timing of when they fire, when they should fire, when you're doing movement. All those things working in a kind of um, a, a, a harmony together to ensure stabilization of your joint when you go to, for example, move your shoulder. Um, that can still happen uh, normally if you've got a large amount of laxity, but the problem comes in in any one of those, either both dynamic and uh, static fail, or, um, or one of the two do, that can then lead to Hi, thanks so much for watching. We really hope you took some useful, valuable information from this video. If you did like it, please do us a favor, like and subscribe, and stay tuned for part two where we'll be delving into the assessment of hypermobility.